ear infections are very common among young children. In fact, roughly 70% of all children have at least one ear infection before their sixth year, and about a third of all children have had at least three infections by this age. Most of these infections happen in the middle ear, which is the pea-sized space located behind the eardrum. This common type of middle ear infection is called otitis media. Though otitis media is usually a minor infection, if left untreated, it can cause problems including hearing impairment and, in very young children, delayed speech development. Fortunately, otitis media is treatable. With prompt professional treatment, there are usually no long-term complications, so it's important for parents to understand what otitis media is, how to recognize it, and what's involved in the successful treatment of this common illness. Mrs. Clark is a typical parent of a child with otitis media. Her four-year-old son, Johnny, has had many ear infections in the last year. As a result, he's missed many days at daycare due to illness and trips to the doctor. In answering Mrs. Clark's questions, this program will address some of the prime issues of concern to her and other parents of children with otitis media. What are the symptoms of otitis media? Children who are old enough to speak may complain of earache or a sensation of fullness or pressure in one or both ears. Infants who cannot yet speak may tug at or rub their ears. Other symptoms may include irritability or increased crying or fussiness, discharge from the ear if the fluid in the middle ear area creates enough pressure on the eardrum to make a hole in it, allowing the fluid to escape to the external ear and or fever. Any of these symptoms may occur alone or in combination. Rarely, in cases with so-called silent infections, there may be no apparent signs of illness at all. With repeated infections, the child may show signs of reduced hearing. He may seem more inattentive, shout, or speak loudly when talking, and sit closer to the television than he used to. Parents may find that they need to speak louder to the child in order to hold his attention. Another sign of reduced hearing in a very young child with recurring infections is that he or she is slower than other children in developing language skills. How does otitis media develop? Otitis media occurs when an infection develops behind the eardrum in the area known as the middle ear. Normally, the middle ear is filled with air, allowing the eardrum to vibrate and therefore transmit sounds to the brain. But sometimes, when a person has a cold or other respiratory illness, the middle ear fills with fluid. In adults, this fluid usually drains naturally through the eustachian tube, which extends downward from the middle ear to the back of the nose. But in young children, the eustachian tube often drains poorly because it isn't mature or strong enough and because it extends horizontally rather than downward. As a result, fluid can build up in the middle ear. Bacteria from the nasal passages can easily invade this fluid and cause an ear infection, which is why otitis media occurs so often during or shortly after a cold, when the nose is congested or stuffy. In order to make a diagnosis, a physician examines the ear with a special instrument called an otoscope. Although it's sometimes frightening for a young child, this procedure is painless and only takes a few moments. The child is often calmed if he or she is allowed to sit in the parent's lap while the doctor examines the infected ear. Seen through the otoscope, the infected eardrum is usually red and may bulge from the pressure created by the accumulated fluid behind it. As children grow, the eustachian tube becomes stronger and drops into a more vertical position. As a result, they become less and less likely to develop ear infections. By age seven or eight, most children have outgrown ear infections altogether. Otitis media shouldn't be confused with otitis externa, or swimmer's ear, a less common type of ear infection. Otitis externa is an infection in the part of the ear that extends from the eardrum to the outer ear. It's usually caused by irritation to the sensitive lining of the ear canal and is often characterized by itchiness or pain in this part of the ear and a discharge due to the inflammation and infection of the external ear canal. Why do some children get few or no ear infections while mine get so many? 
It's not always clear why some children develop more ear infections than others, but there are a number of factors that may contribute to a tendency towards repeated ear infections. These include a history of ear infections in the family, regular exposure to tobacco smoke, a history of allergies, exposure to many other children, such as in a daycare setting, a history of having been bottle-fed rather than breastfed during infancy, putting the baby to bed with a bottle, facial deformities associated with cleft palate or Down syndrome, and onset of a first ear infection before six months of age. While some of these factors are beyond parents' control, parents can minimize or eliminate many other risks. For example, if one or both parents smoke and are unable to quit, they should smoke in areas away from the child, preferably outside of the home altogether. If the child has respiratory allergies, exposure to substances that he or she is allergic to should be minimized as much as possible. And finally, a child should never be put to bed with a bottle. This common habit puts the child at increased risk of developing both ear infections and cavities. Contrary to popular belief, ear infections are not caused by exposure to a draft, forgetting your hat during cold weather, or getting water in the ears during a bath. Another popular myth associates ear infection with excessive wax buildup. This is not true. In fact, wax actually helps protect the ear from germs and irritants, and buildup is rarely a problem for children. Cotton swabs, such as Q-tips, or any other object should never be inserted into the ear to remove wax. For safer wax removal, a few drops of mineral or olive oil can be placed carefully into the ear before bedtime for a couple of nights in a row. This will soften the wax so that it drains easily out of the ear. If there is excessive buildup, removal of wax should be done by a physician or other qualified health professional. How are ear infections treated? Otitis media caused by bacteria is usually treated with antibiotics that are taken by mouth, not administered in the ear, and are prescribed for a total of five to ten days, depending on the antibiotic selected. It's very important that the antibiotics be taken for the total prescribed period, even if symptoms improve or disappear before the medication is finished. Failing to finish the entire prescription may lead to complications of the infection, or may cause the infection to return. Symptoms should start to improve within 48 hours after starting the antibiotics. In the meantime, if needed, acetaminophen may be given for relief of pain or fever, in doses appropriate for the child's age and weight. If the child is still suffering from symptoms more than 48 hours after antibiotic treatment has started, this may be an indication that this particular antibiotic has failed. In this case, the child should be re-examined by the doctor to determine if the antibiotic needs to be changed. Once the full prescription of antibiotics has been finished, the child should return to the doctor for a follow-up examination in order to make sure that the infection has cleared up completely. I've heard in Europe that ear infections are not treated with antibiotics. Why should I treat my son with antibiotics for his ear infections? The use of antibiotics to treat ear infections has been questioned recently by those who argue that some ear infections, like colds, are caused by viruses rather than bacteria. Antibiotics are not effective in treating viruses, and many people are justifiably concerned about the overuse of antibiotics. But in the case of otitis media, it's often impossible to determine whether the infection is caused by a virus or a bacteria, or whether the infection will heal without the use of antibiotics. Today, in certain situations, such as an older child who looks well with a mildly red eardrum, some physicians may choose not to treat the otitis media right away with antibiotics, but may rather follow the child closely, making sure the infection clears on its own. If the eardrum is bulging, however, an antibiotic is nearly always needed. Which treatment approach a physician may select depends entirely on individual circumstances. However, it is known that roughly one-third of all ear infections do not heal on their own without the use of antibiotic treatment. And untreated otitis media has the potential to develop serious infectious complications if bacteria from the infection spreads to other areas of the body. These complications include meningitis caused by spread of the infection to the tissues covering the brain, 
Also, spread of infection to other bones in the ear, possibly resulting in permanent scarring and damage. And spread of bacteria from the ear infection into the bloodstream. It is because of these serious risks that antibiotic treatment is strongly recommended for most children with otitis media. Since antibiotics were introduced in the treatment of otitis media, complications of the infection have dropped dramatically and are now considered rare. What happens if ear infections recur? Recurrence of ear infections is not uncommon. There are several different scenarios which can occur with repeated infections, including the following. Occasional recurring infections. If infections are not frequent, they may be treated individually with another short-term dose of antibiotics. Frequently recurring infections. If the child has had more than three infections in six months, there are two treatment options. The doctor may recommend that the child be put on a low dose of antibiotics for three or four months in order to prevent further infections. Or he may recommend the insertion of special tubes called pressure equalization, or PE tubes, in the child's ear. Persistent middle ear fluid with or without infection. If persistent middle ear fluid is causing hearing problems for the child, the doctor may recommend the insertion of PE tubes in order to allow the fluid to drain and to restore hearing. While antibiotics are useful in treating infection, they will not help clear middle ear fluid. In the vast majority of children, there will be some fluid present following an ear infection, and it usually clears on its own. But in some cases, fluid in the middle ear persists for more than 12 weeks even after the infection has cleared up. The presence of this fluid behind the eardrum may interfere with transmission of sound. In other words, it may cause a temporary reduction in hearing. If persistent fluid reduces a young child's hearing for an extended period of time, it may result in delayed language development and other problems. A physician can determine if there is persistent fluid by examining the eardrum with an otoscope and or with a special test called a tympanogram which can identify the presence of fluid in the middle ear. Hearing can be assessed with a test called an audiogram. If these tests confirm that there is persistent middle ear fluid causing reduced hearing, pressure equalization tubes may be recommended for the child. PE tubes are inserted into the eardrum during a minor surgical procedure performed by an ear, nose, and throat specialist. This simple process is by far the most common type of surgery performed on children in North America. Before surgery, young children are usually given a mild general anesthetic, but older children may only need a local anesthetic. Most children are allowed to return home the same day of the surgery. Once the microscopic tube is inserted into the eardrum, fluid in the middle ear is able to drain through to the outside. As the fluid drains, the eardrum is once again able to vibrate normally, so hearing is improved right away. The PE tube also helps prevent further infections. Since fluid drains to the outside, bacteria do not have a chance to multiply in the middle ear and cause infection. The most commonly used type of PE tube stays in the eardrum for up to one year, then falls out naturally into the outer ear canal as the eardrum seals itself shut. The tube is then easily removed by a doctor without surgery. Since the PE tube opens a tiny entranceway between the outer and the middle ear, water can accidentally travel into the middle ear from the outside. To avoid this, children with tubes need to be careful not to get water into their ears. They should always wear earplugs in the bath or pool and avoid diving deeply into water. Otitis media is a very common problem among young children, causing concern for many parents. But fortunately, effective treatments are available. Parents can be assured that with proper medical evaluation, treatment, and follow-up care, most children do outgrow otitis media with no permanent hearing loss or other long-term problems. The information in this video is meant only for educational purposes and should not replace the advice of your healthcare professional.